Uh, David, coming to yourself, I just, uh, is any, first of all, on, um, on this particular question, is anything that you want to add to what uh, Dana has said? Well, sure. So, so actually what Dana has said um, uh, it sums up also very well how the, the legal regime uh, translates or doesn't translate uh, from a kind of so-called traditional type of environment into, let's say, a virtual environment or an immersive environment. Um, and uh, courts around the world have, uh, to date, they have tried to apply sort of real world, let's say, physical world analogies uh, from existing law to see how existing law should apply in, uh, in a digital space. And, you know, to be honest, it, it, it usually works, but it doesn't always work. Um, you know, one example that comes to mind is, and this is, this is a, this is a number of years now, but, um, you know, when the question arose under trademark law as to, whether Google or other search engines can sell, uh, can sell people's uh, trade, uh, companies' trademarked names to use uh, as, uh, you know, to generate advertisements for, for other companies, right? So obviously, if you type in, you know, XYZ product, um, what you're going to see at the top of the screen is um, you're going to see competing products to XYZ product. Uh, in the first two or three entries in the, in the advertising uh, section. And then below that, uh, presumably you'll see XYZ Products' own website. So, you know, I think that um, there was a, a legitimate kind of objection to that among a lot of companies that said, you know, we have built this brand. We've um, spent hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars to build awareness of this brand. And now this uh, intermediator, intermediary, this search engine is selling our trademark, our huge investment, they are leveraging that to generate advertising revenue for the benefit uh, of our competitors. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, intuitively, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, I, I, I can certainly appreciate that argument. Um, but, but so what courts did is they applied a traditional analogy uh, to a, tradi a, a traditional store, um, and they said, okay, well, if you go into a store and, and you say, you know, um, I, I want to buy XYZ product, uh, what aisle will I find that in? Uh, and, the, and, this, and the store clerk says, well, um, let me take you over to aisle five, and uh, here's the XYZ products, but here's also the, the ABC products. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people, uh, you, you know, really like these ABC products. So it's kind of, you know, it, 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 it's interesting because I think that that sort of scenario to me doesn't seem quite so objectionable uh, as um, as the as the as the scenario that um, uh, the courts ultimately have have upheld, certainly in the United States, which said that, uh, yeah, an advertising company, a search engine can leverage, can essentially uh, piggyback off of the investment that you have made in your trademark uh, to, uh, to, sell, to allow other uh, competitors uh, to advertise their product. By now, it's, you know, it's just unquestioned law, at least in the United States. Um, so that, that's an example. And as I say, in many or most cases, it kind of does make sense and it, and it helps to simplify things if we do take an analogy from uh, you know, from, from the physical world and, and from so-called traditional legal principles. But um, in many cases, it just doesn't quite translate. Yeah, that's quite interesting. And I, I, I suspect that this is going to be an area that will remain fluid for some years to come as this whole industry evolves, similar to other industries which took hundreds of years to get to the point where we have, are and the case law and uh, uh, practices around there have matured. This uh, has a long way to go.